In the Baroque, we will see several different forms of seating, and we've been dealing with this evolution of chairs since the Egyptians, since we started this class. I just want to continue it through the Baroque. And we start with the fauteuil, which is a French chair. Fauteuil is basically chair. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, and we tend to see padded seats and backs. We tend to see open arms, so something that's fairly straightforward here. So as a French armchair with an upholstered back seat, sometimes armrests, but of course we see everything being fairly open. The wood frame is exposed and the seat rails tended to be shaped with Baroque curves and other carving. And we see that relief carving here, although here not as dramatically as our earlier example. We'll also see the bergeret or berger. And this is basically a cushioned armchair with a closed back, usually a rounded back, and closed arms. So it's fairly straightforward. And its distinguishing feature is, of course, that the space beneath the arms is going to be upholstered. You see, we're moving closer and closer to that fully enclosed chair that we see so commonly today in the form of a lazy boy or recliner, any number of other forms. We also see the conversation in the library chair. Now, these are somewhat continental, somewhat English forms. The library chair tends to be more English. And I need to explain how this works because otherwise it doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. The entire idea here is that you would put this in a study, for example, and you actually sit with your back, uh, you sit backwards on it. So you'd be seated here and then you're facing across. This rest is not for your head. This is for your elbows to rest on. There's actually a form for women too, where it's more of a saddle form here, a much narrower seat to allow for the dresses of the time, but they continue to have the rail across the back. This is so that you could be sort of face to face with someone. If you've ever sat backwards on a chair and someone yelled at you and said, that's not how chairs work. Well, it was, it was quite literally what a conversation chair was. Now, what the English will do is they will take exactly that same form, but they will add a shelf to it and it will be referred to as a library chair. Again, you get that feeling of the saddle and you can imagine how this could be a very comfortable chair because sometimes you want to sit back, but especially if you're reading or something like that, you might actually want to sit forward a bit, resting your arms here and then, of course, putting the book out on the table. We'll also see the wing chair. Now, the wing chair is, of course, growing out of some of the Jacobean forms that we saw in England during the Renaissance. And the idea behind it is the chair becomes more and more enclosed. This is fantastic in Baroque construction because there are always drafts and other things. So you would put this in front of the fire. The fire, of course, sets gives off its heat into the chair and you'll see how these wings kind of block any draft from next to you and the arms will slowly enclose over time giving us that classic wing back chair that we are so used to today of course it's coming primarily from the baroque we will see the development of the canapé which is an upholstered settee basically a, what we would term a love seat today and it's going to be upholstered in a number of different forms here we see uh, some cane work along the back with upholstery along the seat and in this case it's very light and yet we have this same heavy relief carving showing up in different sections of it especially in the center of course these are termed love seats uh, because you can sit two people on them they tend to be fairly intimate uh, although they're too small to really do anything today, but you get the idea. It's, it's a small seat. It's going to evolve into the modern couch. And then we have the Burgomaster or the roundabout chair, sometimes termed a corner chair when we get into sort of American Chippendale. But the classic Burgomaster chair actually has six feet on it, and it's meant to sit in a corner. Uh, you can actually sit in it 
in various directions. So I can face this way, I can face this way, I can face straight out. And that gives it a lot of flexibility. You can imagine setting it out at a party and it allows someone to talk to any number of different people by just changing their position slightly. The American versions tend to be square and fit nicely into a corner. Of course, otherwise, if I put a chair, if I have my corner here and I just put a chair across it, I create dead space back here. But with a, a roundabout or Burgomaster chair, the idea is that the chair actually fits nicely into that corner, giving me a little bit more space in the room, which is very important because they want that space to move around, to mingle. This is the Baroque. They are very social people. 